So this is more systems of equations. And now we're going to be adding to not just the linear, but in rational, but conics to it. And so we end up with stuff like this, multiple colors and all these different graphs and where they intersect, they, we get solutions. So let's look at our first graph. So we're going to be dealing with a hyperbola and a circle. And you can already see that we know its answers. So these are the points of intersection. So that's what we're looking for. When you have two graphs, we're looking for the point of intersection between them. So we're going to be looking for an X and a Y coordinate or both. All right. So the first one, we know our solution should be these four points. So they're all threes and ones and just the alternate pairs of them. So let's try it. So here's our two, two equations. So you can already tell that the first is a circle because we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And the second is a hyperbola because we have a minus. So what we're going to do is since they're already set up with circles and hyperbolas, what you want to do is add them together. Okay, so we're going to do what we did with systems of linear equations. We're going to do the elimination method. So if we add these together, we end up with 3x squared and the y squared's cancel equals 27. And that will now give us our equation that we can solve and find our x's. So divide by 3, divide by 3. So x squared equals 9, square root, square root. So x equals plus or minus 3. Make sure you're getting two answers because we're dealing with a square. And if you think about the way it looks, you already know what Desmos is. But if you didn't, you'd have a circle. That's, that's, that's a circle. And it could do this, right? So we get four answers. It could do this. So you get two answers and it could even be outside and we get no answers so like that so you want to make sure that you're matching the graphs with the possible types that you're going to get okay we can even get one answer like that or two answers like that where they're the same point but there's a lot of different situations that's why you want to verify in desmos okay so now we take these two and we plug them back in and it doesn't matter which equation you have because they both share it but you want to be very organized. So I like the first one better, the circle, over the second one. And so we're going to say x equals negative 3, and we're going to find solutions for that one. And x equals positive 3, and we'll find solutions for that one. So we plug it back in, and we solve. So this is 9 plus y squared minus 9. And there's our 1, square root, square root, plus or minus. So y equals plus or minus 1. So that's our two points. For negative 3, we would get negative 1. And we, for negative 3, we'd also get positive 1. And now we do it again. And so you can see that this one is the same exact equation after we square it. So I can just fast forward and say y equals plus or minus 1. And that's the other two, 3 negative 1 and 3 positive 1. And those are the solutions that we got in Desmos. See? Negative 3, 1, and it's top and bottom. That's the plus and the minus. And then for 3, we add positive 1 and negative 1. So the algebra behind it is just giving us our solutions the same way. I shrunk it. Now let's look at the next two. So these two. And so you can see it's the same thing. So there's the first solution, second solution, and so on. So it'll be a very similar setup, except that now you can see it's minus for the y, so it's opening in the y. And so our solutions are up here now instead of on the side, but it's still the same thing. So let's try this one. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to add them together because the y's cancel. So we get 3x squared equals 12. Divide by 3, divide by 3. So x squared equals 4. And x equals plus or minus 2. So we do the same thing x equals negative 2. We'll find those answers. And x equals positive 2. And so when you're writing this, all you're saying is for negative 2, it's going to hit where? And so this one we can see for negative 2, we're going to get two solutions again because we have the square. And for positive 2, we're going to get two solutions again as well. So which one looks better? I like the bottom one. So we're going to use that one. They both intersect at the same point. So it doesn't matter which equation you use. You just have to use one of them. All right. So negative 2 squared minus y squared equals negative 12. So that's 4 minus y squared equals negative 12, minus 4, minus 4, 16. So y squared equals 16, divide both sides by negative 1. So y is plus or minus 4. 
So there it is again, negative two, four, and negative two, positive four. And then, so this one's the same thing, negative two squared, sorry, positive two squared minus y squared. And you can see it's the same exact setup. So you can solve it if you want, or you can just fast forward and say y equals plus or minus four. There's gotta be a lot of symmetry here because of the shapes we're dealing with, hyperbolas and circles, which are very symmetric shapes. So there's your four solutions. Okay, so these are the two different types that we've done before. This is a circle and a hyperbola. So let's try something else now. Let's try a circle with a parabola. And I like to cheat first to see what I'm going after. So let's turn those off, turn on the next two. So you can see that a parabola and a circle, we're getting two solutions here. Now, if we were to drag this parabola down, so like minus, I don't know, 15, right? You can see now that we are getting four solutions. So it doesn't mean you're going to only get two solutions. You could get four, you could get one, you could get none. But ours we're dealing with is two. But you want to always think about the shapes and how they look. So we're going to have a negative two, four, and a two, four for our solutions. So let's try this. So on this one, it's not set up to eliminate. So what we're going to be using is substitution. So I recommend taking your equations and splitting them like this. You'll see why when we do it. And so now you can see that one of them says y equals. That's this guy. And so that's a y right there, and we can substitute it. You could even go back and say, you know what? That's an x squared. And we can substitute it. In fact, that's the one I'm going to use. So we replace that with y. And we end up with that. So we're going to replace the x squared with the y. And so now we rewrite it in quadratic form. So that means setting it equal to 0. And we factor. So plus 5 and negative 4. And so y equals negative 5 and y equals positive 4. Okay. So now let's look at our graph and see what we have. There is no negative 5 here. So what does that mean? It means that there may be false solutions when we're graphing these. So at the very end, you still need to check them. So let's start with the negative 5, and we'll check at the end, okay? And then the 4. So y equals and y equals. So x squared equals negative 5, square root, square root. Oh, we don't have to worry about you. This is five, uh, radical I rad 5, plus or minus. That's not going to show up. So what we can do now is just cross off the negative 5. We know it's not a solution. And we already knew that anyways, because looking at our Desmos, it doesn't show up. So now taking this one, we can now say that x squared equals 4, square root, square root, plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus 2. So now we say that our x is negative 2 with a y of 4, and a positive 2 with a y of 4. And that was the solutions that we had in Desmos. See, our parabola and circle both gave us this. There you have it. All right, so let's do one more. So on this one, let's look at Desmos and see what we have. So you can see that we have a rational function. It doesn't look that way because we're multiplying. But when we solve for y, you will see it. And so we're going to be getting these two horrible numbers, right? But we know that's it because we have our hyperbola. And it doesn't look that way either, but if we move the minus, the 5x squared over, we get a minus. And you can see there's our hyperbola and our rational function. So we're only going to hit once because we have a vertical asymptote at zero sitting here. All right, so let's try this. Okay, so this one is also a substitution because they're not lined up. So we're going to rewrite them, split them up. And what you want to do is convert your rational. So it doesn't matter which one you divide by. So you can divide by the x or the y, your choice. I like everything in terms of x, so I'm solving for y. And so now that's a y, and that's a y, and we substitute it in. So this would become 2 over x squared. And there you go, now it's all x's. That's your goal. Everything needs to be one letter.
just going to shrink it a little bit. All right. So with this one, we've already plugged it in. So now we just need to solve it. So if we multiply everything by x squared, our nice little trick each time, remember now x cannot be zero, which we already knew because it's a rational function. That was our vertical asymptote. So everything's good. So we end up with four equals five x to the fourth plus x squared. We set it equal to zero and we factor. So this is five x squared and x squared. So minus four and plus one. I knew I did that quickly, but you just need to factor it. And so this would become five x squared minus four equals zero. So x squared equals four fifths square root square root x equals plus or minus 2 over rad 5. And we can rationalize if we want to. So this would be plus or minus 2, remember rad 5, rad 5, 2 radical 5 over 5. Either one's fine. And the other one, that's negative 1. So we already know that that's not good. We can cross it off. We can't have the square root of a negative. So we only have 2. So now we're going to do our same split before. And I'm going to leave it as the uh, 2 rad 5. So negative 2 over radical 5 and x equals 2 over radical 5 and we're going to plug them in. So our y equals 2 over and our, x, our y equals the same thing, positive. All right, and so all we do is this is dividing by a fraction, so it's going to flip. And then the twos cancel. So you get negative radical five and radical five. And that's why I said to leave it alone. So uh, we'll put it in the uh, rationalized form. So negative two radical five over five comma negative radical five. So both were negative. And then for the two radical five over five, we got radical five. And there you go. And so now we just need to check those with a calculator. And so I've already plugged in the square root of 4 over 5. We get 0.89. So we should have negative 0.89 and positive 0.89. And then the square root of 5 comes out to be 2.23. So our point should be approximately negative 0 0.89 and 0 0.89. And 2.24. in Desmos. So let's see. And there they are. See? Two points check perfectly. We now have the exact values though, not the approximate. So that is a little bit more of a hard one. So you see rationals, they're not fun. But that is everything. We have done a lot. So thank you.